Alrighty, so the first ever all MLS CCL semifinal first leg is in the books, and in the end, it's the Seattle Sounders who are just 90 minutes away of reaching their first ever CCL final after getting a 3 1 win against NYCFC. But in many ways, this game really lived up to its hype. I mean, there was a lot of people that was very excited about this match with both of these teams being a very good team. But, you know, when you look at how this game kind of plays out, it was very even and that there were times that both teams were, were really at their best. But in the end, Seattle was just a little bit better in this game and especially their finishing was just a little bit better compared to NYCFC. Now, in the first half, and actually before we talk about the first half, there was no Maxi Morales for NYCFC. And, you know, there were times that, especially in the first half, I thought NYCFC did kind of miss the presence of Maxi Morales. But there was also times that even without him being there, they were still looking lethal going for on the attack and still create some decent chances. They could have scored the more than the one goal that they have. Now, I think in the next game, uh, I think that NYCFC is going to get Maxi Morales back and you know the good news for nycfc despite this loss is that you know getting that one away goal is huge with the way that you know all they need is to get get a a two nothing win against seattle at home and at red bull arena and all of a sudden they will be the one that move on into the ccl final now obviously that's easier said to be done because you know the sounders is a team that it is not an easy team to, to break down but you know again I, i'm trying to give give some positive to, to this team and team that you know uh, i think in this game you know they'll be frustrated because I, I didn't think they played badly in this one but they just weren't able to be be more clinical in terms of their finishing and also there was a lot a large part especially in the first half where they were really second best in this game though early on uh first shots of this game came as tiago heads it high from close range as i thought nycfc was controlling the possession early uh Keaton Parks did hit one straight to Fry before Johnson had to deny Morris as the game started to kind of become stretched and kind of started to become a little end-to-end. -end. And in the 16th minute, we saw our first goal of the game. It's Albert Rushnak finally getting off the, the schneid with Seattle, uh, scoring his first goal for Morris and Rodon to get the Sounders a 1-0 lead. Uh, they mentioned that I think this is the ninth game that Albert Rushnak has played for the Sounders. And again, finally, he is off the schneid and hopefully this might be... The goal that really kind of get him going because you know it has definitely not not been a great start for Rusnak doing his 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 first couple of games with the Seattle Sounders and like I said let's hope that this maybe is a beginning of him kind of live up to the potential that he was with when he was with RSL. Uh, Rowe then puts it wide from close range in the 19 or in the 19 minute and really after that goal the the momentum was really with the the Sounders and this is when. NYCFC was kind of just getting pin, pinned back throughout out the stretch. I mean, as I said, the Sounders, they were in complete control in this one. But then in the 27th minute, NYCFC got the equalizer. And it's Thiago Andrade scoring from Castellanos and Amundsen to tie the game up at one apiece. And really, that was against the run of play. Like, again, it, ever since that goal that was scored by Rusnak, it was one-way traffic for the Sounders. And then NYCFC just had a rare attack. And next thing you know, the ball was in the back of the net. And the game is tied up at one apiece. And I was thinking, well, maybe the momentum is now swing back to NYCFC. Because with the way how this game when it seems like the momentum always tends to swing back and forth. Dep depending on on whenever a team ha has some, some chances. I mean, overall, I I think you could say that this was a game where there was a lot. It, it was kind of kind of very even in that there was not really, really a large part of, of the period where a team really kind of dominates throughout the game. Though, in the 32nd minute, uh, the Sounders thought that they got the lead back as Ariaga puts it into the back net, but the goal was disallowed because there was an offside in de development of the attack, and I think it was Morris, the one that was in the, an offside position during the development of this attack. But nevertheless, the Sounders did take a 2-1 lead, and in some way, Morris kind of kind of make amends of him, him being the culprit of of why the, the, the goal that was scored from Ariaga two minutes ago did not count. Because here, he scored from Christian Rodan to give the Sounders a 2-1 lead. Uh, Rui Diaz could have made it 3-1 and should have made it 3-1. As you know, not a lot of times when you see Rui Diaz had a free header in, in the 12-yard box and he and missed that one ba badly. And even though he didn't really miss this one badly and hits this one straight to Johnson, you know that he would love to have that one back with the way that 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 is a, a dream look for any 
number nine when you're wide open like that in the 12 yard box oh uh, there was some typical ccl shenanigan between both team in the first minute of stoppage time we didn't really kind of see the the classic ccl kind of thing where you know there's some pushing and shoving or there's some bad challenge i mean there was definitely some calls that wasn't wasn't given then when it it pretty clear that it it was a foul but like i said this is ccl and you know referee they they tends to either be a little bit too lenient with some of these foul or maybe overly lenient and could be, be at times making very questionable calls so again you, you you know i wasn't surprised that those, those some of those that probably would have called a foul in mls wasn't called in this game but overall you know besides that little shenanigans we have we didn't really see both team kind of clash each other we didn't really see kind of what happened when last time when an all mls matchup has happened between Atlanta versus the union where that was a game i remember there was a lot of shenanigans and it was a lot of shit house that gone on on for the game though in the second leg i think there could be be more of that especially with the sounders trying to protect this 3-1 lead so we go to halftime with the sounders leading in 2-1 and in the second half Oh, it could have been 2-2 two, two if Castellanos didn't miss a sitter from four yards out. So talk about a number nine that wants to ha ha have a chance back. I think Tati Castellanos would definitely want that one back with the way that he doesn't miss a lot of those chances, especially from four yards out. Uh, NYCFC, again, I thought controlled possession. But once again, I thought the Sounders were looking very dangerous on the break. I mean, there was times when the Sounders go on the break. This NYCFC back line had no answer to deal with it. Uh, Magno ha had a chance from close range, but he whiffs that one. And it actually, well, he didn't really completely whiff it. He he, he kind of whiffs a shot that puts a weak, weak kind of effort right into the hands of Stefan Fry. Uh, there was no doubt that NYCFC was starting to pile on some pressure to trying to get the the equalizer. Uh, but you know, the only reason why they haven't really got the equalizer up to that part is that they kind of lack that crucial final ball. I mean, again. You know, this is where maybe if they had Maxi Morales in this team, they probably would have would have been, been been much lethal going forward on on the uh, attack. Though, like I said, there were some parts of the period where you know this this NYCFC team was still able to to create some good ch chances, and you wouldn't even re realize that Maxi Morales wasn't even in this team. Although Rodan hits it said over the bar from eight yards out in the 64th minute, that was also a big opportunity because. Ro Rodon was was pretty much open there there from close range, but he couldn't put that one one away. But in the 67th minute, a penalty was given to the Sounders as VAR deemed that Martins foul foul Rudy Diaz in the box, and it's more like Martins kind of kick in in that that spot that you probably know what that spot is, and it, it's very pay, painful if you're you're on the receiving end of that that spot. But yeah, I mean in the end it was the right call, which Luke. Ladero was able to put that one away to get the Sounders a 3-1 lead. And that also has to be frustrating if you're NYCFC. Because, you know, with the way that the first first um, first 23 minutes or so up to that point, I thought NYCFC were the better t team. And that now all of a sudden they find themselves 3-1 down. And it could have been 4-1 if Rui Diaz, who really was, was trying to score score in this one. In fact, he was trying to score a spectacular goal from 35 yards out trying to to Chip Johnson, who was kind of coming off his lines a little bit too much, but fortunately for him, that one actually puts it high, and even if that one is on target, I think Johnson would have got to it, because again, he did come off his lines a little bit too too much, but not enough where it was similar to what we saw saw on Saturday when, you know, I fought JT Marks and Cassie in that game against Austin, he came off his lines way too much, and Maxim, um, Maxim, Ruti, I almost said Maxi Morales there. I got the ma wrong Maxi see there for a second, but yeah, and Maxi Ruti basically chipped him, him and basically scored that one. And again, Raul Ruti has tried to do the same same thing here, but this time he wasn't able to put on, on target. Uh then Fry was able to deny Morales shot shot f with with a full stretch save. I mean, this one wasn't really hit with a lot of power, but it did take a couple of deflection, and Fry did had to read it this one one late because of the deflection and just able to palm that one away and i also thought that there was some frustration and start to mount to this nycfc team because you know they've seen there's been a couple of chances that they miss and also the fact that you know fatigue maybe started to take take part of this team i mean this is what the sounders do very well they grind you out for a, out the game and it seems like like seattle has got exactly where nycfc see 
they are at right now. And they were also looking to try to get a fourth goal because they know that, you know, yes, they're leading 3-1 and they have a two-goal advantage heading in the second leg. But like I said, you know, if NYCFC get those two goals and the Sounders don't score another one, they're going to be out of the semifinal and it will be NYCFC the one that will be representing the MLS flag in that CCL final against the Liga and Mekis opponent. Uh, El Cervedo then fired one straight to Fry in the 85th minute before Castellanos had really the last chance for NYCFC, but he missed high on a free kick in the 90th minute. And yeah, in the end, the Sounders, again, with a two-goal goal cushion heading into the second lane with a 3-1 victory. Shots in this game, 12 shots compared to 9 that NYCFC had, 6 shots on goal compared to 5 that NYCFC had, 4 shots off target compared to 2 that NYCFC had, both teams had 2 shots that was blocked and possession-wise. 55% possession compared to 45% possession that NYCFC has in this game. And overall, it was a, a very entertaining game. A game that really lived up to the billing that this is going to be a fascinating two-legged affair. And, you know, it will be interesting to see now what the second leg is going to be. Obviously, I think NYCFC is going to really put the pressure on Seattle. And that, I think the Sounders might be a little bit more the the defensive heading into the second leg. But if there's one thing... That I will say about the Sounders is that, you know, they're kind of in a good position where, you know, if they can be a little bit defensive and they know that they can they can go on the counterattack as they've shown at times in this game, they might actually make a goal or two on, on the ro road against NYCFC. But, you know, like I said, for NYCFC, you know, as, eh, even though with this, this loss, you know, they can just get those two goals and make sure don't concede again when they go, go, go to that second leg. Like, like at Red Bull Arena, then they will of course move on into CCL final. But it's easier said than done when when we know that this is a Sounders team that you know they rarely give up got multiple ball goals, let alone alone just just two goals that NYCFC need to do. And you know if NYCFC do give up a goal for the Sounders, then they're gonna have to score three goals and send that that one to a PK shoot. If, if the resort does end 3 1 in the le next leg. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys see the like, smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this game and next week uh, when that game is taking place at Red Bull Arena. I believe that game is on, on Tuesday or Wednesday. It's e it's one of those days. And, you know, it, it's also pretty clear that MLS is taking really, taking, being really serious in terms of having their team. To, to make some history of going to a CCL final and potentially becoming the first ever team to win it is that both of these teams is not going to be playing on the the weekends and that, you know, I think that, that that at the end is a good thing with the way that, you know, now that both of these teams don't really need to worry about what's going to happen in the weekends and really have to kind of punt punt their their games because they, they'll be fully focused on the second leg where you know, where now, now they don't have to do that because they don't have a game doing the the weekend's action which also means that we're only going to get 12 games that's going to, to happen i mean that's still a lot of mls games but it's better than just 14 games and originally if if both of these teams were playing on the weekends i believe we're going to get like 12 games that's going to be happening on saturday which is absolutely insane but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys do like smash the subscribe button like i said let me know in the comments below what do you think of this game and yeah i of course will see you guys next time